for this is from O Abdo, who is a Patreon subscriber. Guys, if you want to sign up for Patreon, yeah. I do have a Patreon as well. Uh, so O wants to know for an odd shaped room, how would you handle when the distance between the left and right speakers are not identical, i.e., the left is further than the right? Um, during calibration, the optimizer compensates for that automatically. Um, we'll introduce a longer delay for the things that are closer to you um, so that no matter where the speakers actually are, the goal is for, you know, if, if I put a signal out of every speaker at the exact same time, even though they're different distances, the timing is such that they will all arrive at the main listening position at the same time. Uh, and we can do that calibration accurate to a tiny fraction of a millisecond. Um, so it's it, with a great deal of precision. We're also introducing the, the one place where every surround processor on the planet struggles a little bit with that timing or the, the delay issue is at very low frequencies because by definition, low frequencies change slowly, right? It's only changing 20 times a second instead of 10,000 times per second. So at low frequencies, every surround processor I know of will get you in the ballpark, but not necessarily 100%. And so we, in the next version of software that's out just in a couple of weeks, um, there's a new button on the what Shane will know is the the processor tab under the gears menu, the more advanced menu, um, that is called Pulse. And it just puts a very short positive going click into whichever speakers you turn it on for. And what you can, I don't think you have that version of the software, Shane. So I appreciate your trying to show it, but you can show the general page it's under the gears menu. If you, oh, you're in the browser. You have to. Oh, yeah, I'm in the browser. Uh, yeah, sorry. Can't do slash that. Dnc .html. Yeah. What is that? It's if you add forward slash VNC, like vir virtual uh, yeah. virtual network connection dot HTML okay. after the forward slash. Yeah. Oh, now I, didn't, I did not know you could do that. Yeah, sneaky, huh? Oh, so now you can okay. hit your menu. And uh, then the processor tab, th fourth one over. And if you go down to inputs, the third tab down on the left, this looks like a really confusing page, but if you look more closely at it, it's really not, right yeah. out of a recording studio kind of interface, but it's the same exact controls over and over and over again for the left channel, the right channel, the center channel, and so on. And on this page, there will be down near the input EQ button, um, somewhere in the middle of the page, there'll be an additional button that says pulse and it'll put out this little click. And when that click is reproduced, you know, the way I typically use it is I'll use it to time align the screen channels with my subwoofers because mm -hmm. if your screen channel responds, of course, really fast and the subwoofer responds a little bit more slowly, um, what you'll hear is that that click, this is going to be embarrassing, that click will go click. There'll sort of be a downward sound to it because the, the sub is following the main speaker. And then you can go to the audio delays tab, which is the bottom tab on the left there. And you can manually adjust things um, until it's not going click or click, but rather everything all at once. And it, Interesting. it it's a subjective thing. Um, but in my experience, the human ear is better at this than any measurement system I've ever seen. Uh -huh. um, because unless your subwoofer has a lot of you know, significant amount of high frequency output. And there are some subs that are perfectly okay going up to 500 Hertz. And so it's at that point, it's relatively easy to time align them. But if they really are limited to 100 Hertz and down, um, it, it's harder to know exactly how far away they are because things are just happening slowly. And that's when is that rolling out next week? It's part of the next uh, so software release along with the audio object viewer. Hmm. Okay, very cool. And a couple of other things.